How do we build a model? Well, we're not going to talk about math at all here. We're just going to talk through the logic. And this goes back to things we've done before. What variables affect the likelihood of scoring a goal? Just think about it. Forget math. Forgetting the word variable. Forget I said that. Change it to things. Change it to attribute. Whatever word you like. Don't think of this as math. Just think of it as, well, what makes a player more likely to score a goal once she shoots the ball? Well, things like distance, right? You'd expect shots taken closer to goal would be more likely to go in. Angle from goal. If a shot is taken from a wide angle, it's probably less likely to go in as opposed to taken from the center. Um, is it kicked or is it headed? Is it coming from a fast attack, a counterattack, if you will? What about defensive positioning? Is the shooter under pressure or not? Um, what's the score at the time of the goal? The game state, as they call it in the analytics world. And game state is just a fancy phrase for what's the score? Are you winning or losing? Are you ahead or behind? By how much? Uh, maybe the time matters. Maybe shots taken early in the game have a higher expected value than shots taken at the end of the game when you're in panic mode and just kind of shooting, hoping for a lottery ticket. Um, does the shot come from a corner kick or a cross? Is it from a free kick? Does the goalkeeper make an error? All of those things matter. Um, I'm just realizing I have goalkeepers two words there, but I've recorded several minutes without a break, so I'm going to leave it in there. Trust me that I know that's not how you spell goalkeeper. Uh, these are the things, though, that affect the likelihood of scoring a goal. There's probably more, and you can add more to your model if you want. These are some of the big ones I thought of, and some of the easiest ones to do. Um, it's all about the logic of soccer. Subject matter expertise matters. Don't think about it in terms of variables. Don't think about it in terms of what data is available. Don't think of any of that stuff. Just think to yourself, when you watch somebody shoot at goal, and you say, oh, that's, he's never going to score from there, or she's never going to score from there, or she'll absolutely score from there. What are you thinking? Why are you making that decision? It all comes from your observations. This all goes back to lesson one, right? It's all about your observations of the world and how you see things. That's all you're doing here. So do that when you build your expected goals model. It's not about math. It's not complicated. It's about knowing something about the game of soccer. So once you've thought through these variables, what do you do? Well, you collect some data. Um, I've already done this with partial um, 2015 NWSL data. I've got, I think, three or four or five weeks worth of data collected. I've got roughly 550 shots in my database so far. I'm going to keep going. It's a kind of a slow process, but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to get that whole season done, and I'm going to start the new season as soon as that gets up. Life will be good. I've collected my own data, and it wasn't that difficult. It took a lot of watching soccer, but, you know, I watch a lot of soccer anyway, and presumably you do too if you're watching YouTube videos on how to learn more about soccer analytics. Um, Opta provides data. Um, it's fairly expensive, though, um, so if you're trying to use the, you know, high-end data, you either need to get a job with a media company or you need to be independently wealthy and buy the data. And if you're independently wealthy, we should talk after this video is over. Um, another option is uh, Christopher Long, um, Octonion on Twitter, um, has on his GitHub, he has some shot position data he scraped and he shares publicly. They're all in CSV files. You can download them, use them. He's made them public for everyone to use. Um, I've never actually used those before. I was going to for this video, but I decided to collect my own data instead. Um, they're up there, though, and they're worth looking at. It's some great, great public data that he's providing um, that should be really helpful to people looking to build their own models. But whatever, you collect the data, collect all those variables you talked about a minute ago. You need data on all those things or whatever you want to put into your model. You can do whatever you want. You take that, you put it into an Excel spreadsheet, um, and then you do your analysis. And you can use Excel for your analysis, at least if you want to get regression coefficients. Um, there's fancier add-ins to Excel that you can use. Honestly, once you start using the add-ins, I feel like you should probably just use R, though. Uh, we've talked about R as a free statistical software. It's what I use. It's powerful. It's fairly easy to use. Life is good, but you can use whatever you want. Um, Excel and R are free. Um, PSPP is a piece of free software. It's the sort of the freeware version of SPSS. Um, Stata, MATLAB, SAS. I don't know about MATLAB. But I don't really know anything about that. But SAS, whatever you want to do. You do your analysis, pick the software of your choice, and you do the analysis. I like Excel and R because they're free. Um, free is always good. 